GNW Electric has been in the energy business since the dawn of electric power, managing grid infrastructure and providing solutions to overground and submersible power delivery. The company's continued presence in the sector, coupled with the challenges of climate change and massively increased demand, speaks volumes about its resilience as an operation. Joining us today is John Gunaris, the Vice President of GNW Electric, to tell us more about GNW's approach to sustainability and efficiency and innovation. When you move to solar and wind and you add in battery storage, those are inherently decentralized. And that is what has driven really the need to improve digitalization, add more technology, to make the grid more efficient and more capable to handle these multiple power flows. John, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure being here. Tell us a bit, first of all, about GNW, your history, your mission, your values. Yeah, so GNW Electric, um, we've been in business since 1905. It's been a family-owned operation that entire time. And uh, in 120 years, uh, we have amassed uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise um, in the industry that we serve, which is the, uh, it's the electric power industry. Uh, we serve utilities and users of uh, large users of electric power uh, all over the world. We have products on all seven continents. And uh, the products that we manufacture um, are critical to the operation of, of, uh, of the electric grid, and they're crucial to enabling modern life. Um, so our equipment is, if we're doing things correctly, you never know we're even there. Um, but we make the electric grid much safer to operate. Uh, we make it, um, we, we can minimize problems that happen on the grid, whereas few customers are impacting an outage. Basically, everything we do is geared towards making electric power safer, um, minimizing outages, and, um, and keeping the lights on um, all around the world. Uh Fair to describe you as kind of unsung heroes in that way? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like I said, like if we're doing our job correctly, you don't even know we're there. Um, but electric power is just becoming so much more important in modern life. Um, I mean, if you, if you look at how this industry has changed over the years, it's been absolutely remarkable. Um, so if you look at my career started over 20 years ago, and at that time the industry was necessary, absolutely critical, um, but it was kind of sleepy in a way in that um, it was you know, kind of shy of new technologies not really wanting to rock the boat too much. And this was sort of a global phenomenon, just not in the, in the, in the markets that we serve. But it's, uh, uh, it has changed dramatically. And the reason why it's changed so dramatically is because we're in a major transitional phase with the electric power grid right now. And the way that we talk about it internally within GNW Electric is we kind of talk about this framework called the three Ds. Um, it starts with uh, decarbonization. And what we mean by that is, um, uh, the realities of climate change and the need to reduce um, carbon from the generation of electric power. So for people out there, this is solar, this is wind, this is batteries. And um, uh, decarbonization leads to decentralization. And what that means is um, for most of our industry's history, you'd have a big old power plant, whether it's coal or natural gas or nuclear or whatever, uh, generating a huge amount of electricity and sending that power one way down uh, the distribution line, uh, feeding power to, uh, to end users. And that's beginning to change. Power is now much more uh, multi-directional, meaning that you've got solar and wind and battery on top of all these traditional sources of electric power all operating together in a very decentralized sort of way. That's the second D. And then the third one is digitalization. And to make all of that work correctly, um, you need to add a lot more intelligence to the grid. You need a lot more sensors. You need uh, many more pieces of equipment to be able to allow the grid to operate efficiently in that kind of environment. Um, it takes not only sensors, it takes high-speed communications. It takes um, analytical tools that are far more advanced than what we've had in the past. Um, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence will be critical technologies to be able to make sense of all this data 
uh, to extract the insights necessary to be able to operate uh, the next generation power grid. And where are you with the innovation on things like automation and sensors particularly? Yeah, so GW Electric has been um, involved in automation technologies nearly going all the way back to the beginning of the company's history. So we started in 1905, um, we've developed multiple generation of electrical switches, multiple generations of recloser products. And these are switching products that they operate on the grid. You don't even know they're there. And um, to make the grid operate more efficiently, to make it operate more reliably, uh, the concept of automation was something that was started, at least for g and Electric, going all the way back to uh, the late 1920s. It's almost 100 years that automation has been a part of our DNA. And we were talking earlier, I mean, this stuff just doesn't come from a shelf in your backyard. No. I mean, you, go, you have a huge network to find the best kit to do the best job the best way, don't you? Yeah, that's, that's a really interesting point. So one of the things that's important for g and Electric is in our 120-year history, we have built a tremendous amount of knowledge from not only an engineering point of view, um, but how the grid operates, understanding our customers' problems and applications. Um, and we've been able to leverage that for uh, the last 120 years. And having that knowledge is really critical for us to help us navigate not only our own company, but our customers in this grid transformation that, um, uh, that we're embarking on. Um, what's really important to understand is um, the history of the company has been steeped in trying to listen to our customers first. This is an approach that I think has been uniquely g and Electric for much of our history. Listen to what the customer's problem is, really try to understand and be in their shoes of what they're experiencing, and then use that 120-year engineering toolkit to create a solution that will uniquely solve their problem. We do this over and over and over again. But it's more than just listening to your customers, it's more than just being customer-centric. Behind that approach is a very unique manufacturing capability that allows us to turn these great innovative ideas that our engineers come up with into a reality, a product that can actually be installed and operated. Um, but it's even more than that. Um, it's the ability to manufacture these products to a very high level of quality. One of the things that maybe people don't know about our industry is that the devices that manufacturers like g and make are not devices that last days, weeks, months, or even years. Our equipment lasts decades. And so it needs to be built to a level of robustness and quality that, uh, frankly, the general public may not be aware of. I mean, this stuff is built to last for a very long time. You talked a bit earlier about the listening culture that you have with your yeah. clients and so on. I mean, tell us a bit about the, the, the sort of the, the relationship with your clients and your customers. Are you the leader in that? Are they the leader in that? Do they come to you with problems that need solving? Do you get your heads together to tackle issues and come up with ideas and solutions for the future? How does, how does that work? Yeah, so it, uh, the interaction or what can start the interaction can happen in a multitude of different ways. But when we typically start out with a discussion with a customer, we're, at, we're, we're always asking questions and just letting the customer talk and, and tell us what their issues are and what their problems are. And what we're looking for are, you know, things, problems that we can solve with, you know, the unique knowledge and capability that we've developed over 120 years. Really what the magic in all of this is that what one utility may be experiencing as an issue, there's a very good chance that many utilities are experiencing that issue. So we can take that knowledge, um, keep it as part of what, you know, what we hold uh, and what we know, and we can use that with other customers. And our industry is very uh, philanthropic in that way. Like if, uh, and many of the utilities are talking amongst themselves anyway about sharing knowledges and best practices. Well, we get to do that too. As a result of our one-on-one -on -one collaborations with our customers, we're able to use that with other utilities having similar problems and then you know, back it up with all the, uh, the support that I just mentioned. It's, uh, it's been a very rewarding way for us to go to market. So you said that 20 years ago, you had a comfortable drift. Things have really changed now. So looking ahead then, final thought, what do you see coming down the line for you 10, 20 years ahead? Well, so um, I talked a lot about kind of our approach um, to how we service our customers. And the grid transformation that's coming is going to impact how electric power is made, distributed, and used um, everywhere in the world. Every aspect of that is going to get flipped on its head. 
Um, this is an industry that is, it's just going through truly transformational change. And there is no single company that is going to be able to be all things to all customers. So one of the things that's really important for manufacturers is, you know, we're very proud of the industry that we serve. We, we feel that we serve it, right? We're not just a business making money. We're like we serve this critically important industry in modern society. And uh, we thought long and hard about our innovation strategy, about where we want to play in this grid transformation, and perhaps more importantly, decide where we're not because we're not going to be able to all, be all things to all people. We have to focus on certain things where we could really make an advancement, really make a difference, and solve some unique challenges that our customers are facing. And the way that we're going to do that is just how I described before. It's understanding and listening to what problems that customers are experiencing, which they've never had to deal with before. There is no known solution today for what issue they're having. And we as g and Electric sitting there and saying, are we really able to leverage that 120 year history, that manufacturing capability that we have, the engineering capability, the quality, all that. Can we leverage that to really solve this problem? Sometimes the answer is going to be no, but many times the answer is going to be yes. And that's a conversation that we want to engage and collaborate with our customers. And I will tell you that um, some of the best innovations that uh, G&W Electric has produced is as a result of these conversations with a utility where what do we do in this situation and and we're able to work together and sometimes it can take years to come up with a with a solution but uh, many times when we do um, uh, what comes out of it is, is something that not only helps that customer but it helps the whole industry and briefly you're an optimist right very much so <laughs> very much so john absolute pleasure talking to you thanks very much oh, wonderful thank you the future of our fourth industrial revolution, one way or another, rests on electricity. In a planet hungry for power to support its digital infrastructures, its populations and their economies, GNW is guaranteed a continued role shouldering that burden of energy support long into the future.